All right, so I'm not shooting the same intro again. I decided to try to at least button up uh, the back just a little bit. But uh, till the other backgrounds are done, this is what it looks like. I don't mind the white screen. It feels a little sterile, right? Not gonna lie about that. A little bit sterile, but it's it's a uh, it's a fresh look. And we're bouncing back and forth between using green screen and uh, other stuff. Hope that doesn't bother you guys too much because it's what we're doing. So I hope you. <laughs> So I hope it doesn't bother you too much. Siren Head, the creation. I really enjoyed the uh, Siren Head uh, uh, video from SCP Animated. And uh, you guys were saying it wasn't an SCP, but I saw an article that it was, which is why I found it in the first place. But I guess maybe it's just like a, a fan creation or something like that. That's fine. Here's another part of the story. I guess this is actually technically part two. I played a short game of Siren Head that wasn't like a horror game at all, really. Um, uh, but I played that, and I'm, there's another one somebody else told me to play, so I'll probably check that one out today, too. So I'll probably do all that, and then be caught up on all Siren head E type stuff. Hopefully we get getting back on the channel soon. She's been grinding hard on her own channel. Last time we shot vids, we had like a little hiccup, so she was editing furiously. So make sure you show her some love on her stuff. She worked really hard on those, uh, the last uh, couple vids you guys will see. She worked really hard to get those up for you guys. Like. Yes, 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 yes. It is literally the part two. Ashley was really excited. And the poor dog, too, damn. So he's not dead. He's inside the esophagus, maybe, of the siren head. Because there's no way he's got a stomach. He's got holes in his body. It's like a ground vagina. What is this? It's about time. I've been Them wondering if you were going to wake up at all. What? Where, where am I? How did I get here? I imagine the same way I did. And where is your boot? Yeah, right. I guess I never considered it had a gender. It was always <laughs> just this thing, this monster. Name's Charlotte. And if it's any consolation, I'm sorry your luck has brought you here. Hi, right, Charlotte. Jackson. Same to you. It's a very pleasant What's your story? To situation. Clearly, you already know about the Siren Ed. Have you had run ins with him before? You could say that. He took my mom. And a dog, bro. It came back when we heard it like whistling to the dog. Yeah. I'll admit, I've never fully recovered. I mean, I went after the guy with just an axe and a shotgun. How nutty must I have been? <laughs> Every night for years, when I laid my head down, it wasn't the swaying of the wheat or the chirp of the crickets I heard. It was the distorted, muffled voice of my mother speaking to me. He needs counseling. Uh, you can see, uh, you can see like the the wire running, right? That's like a wire for like a mic wire or something running on the ground or whatever. Siren head. Wow, that all sounds really rough. I know you, you need, probably you heard it from everyone close to you, but it isn't your fault, Jackson. Oh, I know it isn't my fault. It's his. <laughs> Revenge. Now, tell me, how did you find yourself down here? Mine might not be as tragic as yours, but it is complicated to say the least. In my former life, I was a doctor. Well, former life. at least she I was quit. training to be one. Dog, she quit already. She ain't my former life. I'm done. I'm stuck. I'm in this thing for the rest of my life, bro. I'm not getting out. When it all began, I was simply a resident under the tutelage of the master surgeon, Dr. Vincent Henderson. God, did I respect that man. There was no problem he couldn't fix, big or small. Man, if he wasn't set on fixing everything he could. Luckily, I felt the same way. I thought the two of us could change the world. I would have followed him to the end of the earth. Sometimes, it feels like I did. About two years into my residence- The people talking in the background made me very uncomfortable. So there's only two people in my house, so who the fuck is talking? But it's from the video. See, he became extremely focused on philanthropic aid. Ooh. We started taking trips to hospitals and more impoverished Being areas, rich. volunteering Being entire rich. weekends at a time. He kept pushing me harder, saying that we needed to do more. It was our civic duty. I was constantly exhausted. I couldn't catch a break. 
If it was anybody else, I would have given up and found a new surgeon to study under, but he was so inspiring. I pushed through so much exhaustion and pain for him and for the people we were helping. Invariably, there were patients that we could do nothing for. Either we were too late or they were too sick. Over time, I started to become accustomed to death, as most doctors do. But Vincent took it hard every single time. He said it felt like he personally failed them. Jesus Christ, that's not One healthy. Night, we were closing up. That sounds like some shit, uh, what's that show Skid and Watson? With the, not General Hospital. Some shit with some doctors and some drama though, but they be killing people on that shit every episode. Like, she tells me every time, like, the six or seven people die since you've been here last. Like, and they just be used practice, to it. practice, and he pulled a bottle of gin out of his desk drawer. Oh, he I drinking. could stay for a drink if I'd like. And of course I did. As the night went on, he got Ooh, more and more drinking. distraught. Going on his usual tirade, berating himself for not doing enough. He said that every patient who died in his care was a life that he'd wasted. Ooh. That stuck out to me. That's I'd never tough. said that before. Yeah, that's so tough. I tried consoling him, saying that it wasn't up to him what they did with their lives. Then he looked at me intensely and said, Maybe not, but there is something we can do with their deaths. He had me follow him into an exam room at the back of the practice. Wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute. This story is getting good. Is this a Frankenstein monster situation? Pushed a floor to ceiling storage cabinet aside it to reveal a metal is. door that I'd never seen before. Milo. Hey, Milo. Where are you? Bro, boy? what? This is getting good. All right, I'm invested again. They got me. I'm roped in. I'm deep. Okay, I was I, I was gonna mention that I, I did mention the boot, or did I not say that and just think that I should say it and didn't say it? But I was thinking to say something about the boot, but there's the boot, Das boot. Wow, a secret room. Mm-hmm. Heavy. What was in there? Bodies. The a room bunch was of a cold bodies. storage unit. I'd never known about it all my months of working with him. Yeah. He unlocked it and ushered me inside. I remember the so shock, yeah. mostly, <laughs> and smell. There were four bodies laying on metal exam tables covered in thin white sheets. Panic started to rise, and every muscle in my body was ready to run, but a certain thin curiosity held me back. Mm -hmm. He walked to the first body and looked at me before lifting the sheet. <laughs> this is a problem. It was a Caucasian male, about 40, bloated and extremely pale. His skull had been opened and sewn shut again, and there were pins sticking into his scalp. Jesus. And there was a speaker in his mouth, stretching his Why? lips abnormally wide. Why? The second body Vincent uncovered was a oh! Middle Eastern female, no older than 30, who I could tell had been beautiful before she was hacked up. The third one was very thin, probably someone who suffered from anorexia. Oh, it is gross. She was definitely less bloated than the others, but... Could... Bro, this some SCP shit, right? Like, it's got, bro, that is, though. Like, even if it's not an SCP, this is some SCP shit. Like, compelling doctor is just plugging speakers into faces. That don't make any medical sense. Been because the body was fresher. Uh. At this point, my mind was spinning, and it that felt gross. hard to breathe. Yeah. Vincent barely showed any emotion at all, probably yeah. just trying to gauge my reaction. That's disgusting. He did hesitate slightly before revealing the last body, though. I couldn't tell what it had oh. been. The entire head had been removed. Instead of a neck, there was a metal pole sticking out from between the shoulders, and mounted Why on top of it was a large cone-shaped speaker. Why More like a megaphone or a siren than a speaker, really. You need to leave. How are you still alive and not a science project? The body was completely emaciated. The skin was leathery, almost uh. like it had been mummified. I'm gonna stop you right there. Please do. This long-winded speech of yours really just boils down to your buddy creating this monster. That's all it is, isn't it? There's more to it. Really, we... We? What do you mean, Ooh. we? Just listen. The object of your vindication! Chopper up! What's the homie's name? Jackson. Chopper up, Jackson. Right after he showed me all of that, he explained the project to me. He needed help, he said. Yo, she the two did, of us bro. were Why? doing all that we could, but it wasn't enough. 
There was still enormous suffering, even within our immediate community. This bitch stupid. Through this loss of life, he said he could build something useful. Bodies to help aid us, if he could reanimate them. This was going to be his greatest achievement. And he asked me to help him. He said he was very close to finishing the project. And he was sure his next one would work. But the operation would be delicate and lengthy. He needed me. So what? You're in love with this guy and you just do anything he asks? But that's what I'm saying. Just because somebody tells a story and you can identify in that story is supposed to make you feel empathetic. That does not mean you need to feel that way, dog. Just because you can understand that she had some kind of love and connection with this dude and was working really hard for him doesn't mean you need to agree with the fact that she did do that for him. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes talking on the internet, it's just like, bro, like I understand what they're saying. It's still dumb. You, what the fuck? This bitch, come on, man. It, just because you can do some shit don't mean you should do some shit. I didn't shit. say yes right away. I said I need time to think it over. Which you you needed to go to the police. <laughs> I, mean, I knew it was disrespectful to the people whose bodies he used. What I knew it was unnatural. Fuck? Seriously, kid, I was torn about it. I couldn't sleep at night. How old is my this lady, man? My devotion to him and my belief in his work were pitted against this grotesque and extremely illegal project. Yeah, but he procured a body just a couple days later, and when he called on me to step up, I, I just couldn't refuse. This bitch is done. Procured a body? Exactly. Jesus, did you never ask where he got them from? Of course I did. I had a lot of questions. So many that I thought he would accuse me of prying and throw me out of his office, or worse. But he was always what patient and worse? answered every question with the same calm logic he used that first night. <sighs> The bodies were from a colleague of his. With the number of people that he helped, he'd won a ridiculous amount of favors and trust in the community. And why the speakers? Yeah, please. Oh, this is the it. The muscles is... used to create speech are much... Okay, hold on, hold on. Sorry. This is big. And I don't think that I'm going to like this description, but I'm going to listen to it with an open heart because I'm invested in the story. All right. Oh, the muscles used to create speech are much harder to control than muscles in your arms or legs. These things didn't need to talk much, but if they were going to interact with our patients, they need to speak a little. So the speakers were easier than trying to get their mouths to work. Well, we that does not explain why it's a 1950 fucking loudspeaker, but whatever. Only accomplished that once. On him. I wasn't even in the room for that part. He asked me to step out, but the rest of the operation was grueling. Prepping the body took nearly 20 hours, and then we had to remove the head, attach the sirens, string wires around, graft muscle onto metal, cover the really gross-looking parts with extra skin. It felt more like an installation than an operation in some ways. We pumped that body full of steroids, had it attached to huge monitors, used electric charges. It was so experimental. I had no idea how he came up with these techniques. If you could even call them that. I mean, I don't, what else would you call them other than techniques? I mean, I don't know, uh, blueprint? <laughs> Installation guide? <laughs> it's a user manual. So I was like, right. <laughs> you made it. You did. Sure, we both did. I That's felt conflicted the entire time. Why don't they give it clothes, nigga? Like, Dollar General sells shirts, you fucking... Fine, but once the thing came to life, <laughs> oh, you have to understand, I thought this would only gross. lead to good things, less suffering. Gross. I was proud to some extent. At first, <laughs> it seemed to go really well. We would give it simple commands and it would listen. We just kept him in his office doing little tasks under supervision. Then, I think, Vincent went back and worked on him a little more without me. He started growing. And by all laws of logic, that shouldn't have happened. He wasn't truly, really alive. At least at first. He became more violent and hard to control, and one day he just broke through the wall of the office and ran off. Why not? Why not just let we it live? Him down Why to not this do nothing to stop area. this? Fine. It wasn't hard. <laughs> he created this path of destruction wherever he went. It wasn't anything like he does now, though. He was only about ten feet tall at the time. When we found him, he was blundering around in circles and spouting nonsense from his sirens. He seemed confused, honestly. It was all just radio static and the occasional word jumble. 
Vincent and I tried to talk to him, but he either didn't understand us anymore or didn't care what we were saying. Eventually, Vincent decided he was a lost cause and wanted to try again with a sixth body. But by that point, I was thoroughly horrified at what our creation had become. I told him I was out. I couldn't continue the project anymore. And I've spent all my years since then tracking Siren Head, trying to figure out how to undo my mistake. Milo, there you are. Oh man. Good boy, Milo. Oh man. Wow, this dog is just meandering to his death, dog. <laughs> he just <laughs> strolled all in. I, if this dog dies, I'm never coming back. By the Do way. Do you have any idea what grief you've brought people? I lost my whole family because of this thing. Who knows what it's done to other people in the 12 years since then? You think I haven't thought about that? I've spent my whole life trying to make up for what I did. How could you create something you had no control over? But we did! I don't know what Vincent did to it after that first operation. That's what made us lose control. It sounds like you're trying to tell yourself you're not to blame. It really does. I think you should kill her, Jackson. <laughs> but you weren't responsible for Murder everything her. it's done. No, that's not true at all. Yeah, it is. All right. <laughs> Random cave in. She got Obito, dog. What the fuck? Please, you have to help me! Nigga, fuck that baby, bro, Jackson, bro! I don't bro. think so. Yeah! You killed my mother. Yeah! Jackson said it's real simple, baby. It's real simple. So, you know what? In the first episode, I'm talking about, you know, not every Sasuke gets his Donzo. Jackson got his Donzo. You know what I'm saying? I know it's gonna be a part two. I had no idea. I thought it was a one and done. But this is a saga. Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, that's great. If this dog dies, though, I, I might not finish this series, but that was good. That was damn good. All right, man, I'll holler at y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one. There's another piece. Glad Jackson, Jackson got his kill in. You know what I mean? He's shooting for a kill streak. I'll holler at y'all, man. Peace.